hello everyone today we are going to discuss about the topic or chapter called as enzymes and in this we are going to begin with the content that we are going to cover in this session the contents including the definition of the enzymes chemical nature mechanism of enzyme action how the enzymes perform the action and then uh, the structure of enzymes including the active site substrate ending site and catalytic site and the whole enzymes apo enzyme cofactor coenzyme activator prosthetic groups so these are all topic comes under enzymes chapter and also in the continuing session also we are going to talk about proenzymes zymogen both are same proenzyme or zymogen along with the classification of enzyme enzyme specificity how enzymes are specific in their action and what are the factors affecting the enzyme activity and also we are going to discuss about enzyme inhibition and its significance in biochemical reactions so let us begin with enzymes from the definition so bio catalysts enzymes are bio catalysts enzymes are going to perform the reactions and convert the substrate into products and this involve of enzymes will make the reaction faster than the normal process which doesn't require enzymes if enzymes are not available the reaction takes place but it is very slow but if enzymes are available the reaction are rapid and it will take short time so let us see the definition enzymes can be defined as bio catalyst bio means living organisms and in the living organisms only the, you can see the enzymes like plants animals microorganisms bio catalyst synthesized by living tissues which increase the rate of the reaction without getting consumed in the process so this enzyme is going to convert the substrate into product but during that reaction the enzymes is going to remain as such without undergoing any change after the reaction enzymes are protein in nature they are made up of proteins most of them exception of a few enzymes like ribozymes most of the enzymes are protein in nature thermolabile means thermo means temperature sensitive to temperature thermolabile and colloidal in nature their uh, size is 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer colloidal in nature and specific in their action they will perform a particular specific reaction other than that reaction they will not perform for example sucrase convert the sucrose into glucose and fructose and sucrase will act only on sucrose that's why it is very specific it is not going to act on any other lactose or maltose sucrase acts on sucrose that's the meaning of specificity in a human uh, or in uh, living organisms the reactions biochemical reaction takes place with the help of the enzymes and how this enzyme is going to convert the substrate or reactant usually called as substrate into product let us see so mechanism of enzyme action enzymes acts by binding with the substrate and lowering their activation energy activation energy is the energy required by the reactant to undergo the re undergo reaction you can see in the illustration example illustration e means enzyme plus s means the substrate they will combine to form enzyme substrate complex later the substrate is converted to product and enzyme released as such so if you see the first paragraph enzyme act by binding with the substrate so that's what illustration enzyme e plus binding with the substrate yes you can see the sentence and also illustration and uh, thereby the substrate which requires certain energy to get converted to product that energy is lowered so hence you can see the, in the first sentence lowering their activation energy when energy is uh, uh, lowered then there is more possibility of substrate getting converted into product so the prime requisite for enzyme reaction is binding of the enzyme with the substrate to form enzyme substrate complex that is es that you can see in the illustration e plus s is es 
which later dissociates to form product and free enzyme that means you can see in the illustration es arrow mark e plus b and in the last sentence it is shown as later dissociates to form product so in the illustration last is p product and free enzyme so next to p you can see e so this is how the reaction takes place if i want to show you in a diagrammatic uh, representation in this you can see illustration the enzyme is there in the yellow color and then substrate is there in the blue color so the uh, in the first picture uh, the enzyme and substrates are not attached e and s so in the next one you can see the yellow color attached to the blue color diagram that is enzyme and substrate are bound to each other and the enzyme substrate complex later in the last uh, you can see the yellow that is enzyme is released as such with the pro release of products that is in the light blue color and the purple color so this is e plus s in the first one and the middle one is es complex and the last one is e plus p p means product you can see in the above reaction products that is what the same thing here it's written in the words they are written shown in the diagram this mechanism was proposed by Michaelis and Menten. Michaelis and Menten first proposed this enzyme substrate complex hypothesis in 1913, which is accepted even today also. The very famous uh, theory proposed by Michaelis and Menten, enzyme substrate complex theory. Many theories have been put forth to explain the mechanism of formation of enzyme substrate complex and along with uh, Michael S. Minton, like Fisher, Emil Fisher also proposed a theory called as a template theory or lock and key model theory and Coastland also introduced induced fit theory so we are going to discuss only few of it so this is the illustration of enzyme mechanism E plus S gives ES complex in the second one and in the later E plus P so this is basic enzyme mechanism of action the same thing in this slide also you can see in the above e plus s is es plus e plus p so now we are going to discuss about um, fisher template theory or lock and key model theory which usually explain the specificity of the enzymes according to this theory the enzyme is rigid pre-shaped template and complementary to the substrate complementary means the active site the binding area of the enzyme is very much similar in shape to that of substrate that's why it is considered as lock under the key where a particular lock will fit to a particular a particular key will fit to a particular lock and likewise a particular substrate will bind to particular enzyme this substrate binds to the active site of enzyme like a key into the proper lock so you can see in the first paragraph last sentence so like a key into the proper lock the substrate is going to bind to enzyme this theory was proposed to be correct for many enzyme not for all enzyme many enzyme however it does not explain the flexibility of some enzymes especially allosteric enzymes it tells that uh, the shape of the active site is similar to that of substrate but there are certain enzymes where the active site is not similar to that of a substrate but when during the binding process the active site will get the shape of the substrate so this only tells about the rigidity active sites not for the flexible active sites of the allosteric enzymes so e plus s gives enzyme substrate complex you can see the shape of the substrate on the active site where it is binding to the enzyme is similar in shape this is a theory proposed by emil fisher called as template theory or lock and key model next is we are going to see what is active site so in enzyme in the enzyme will bind to substrate the area where the substrate will bind to enzyme that area is called as active site or active center <coughs> the active site of an enzyme can be defined as a dynamic region of enzyme where substrate binds and get converted to product so you can see i will show the illustration so this is the enzyme 
in the blue color in the ash colored you can see substrate or silver colored with black border you can see the shape of the substrate and where it is going to bind it will bind to the particular area in the enzyme that is called as active site so this area where it is having the shape of the substrate that area enzyme is going to bind with the substrate that area is called as active site in the active site you can see in the left side you can see binding site and in the right side you can see catalytic site so the active site involves or contains two sites one is called as binding site and another one is called as catalytic sites binding site hold the substrate in place it is going to just attach to the substrate whereas catalytic site will perform the reaction so in the active site means the area where <coughs> the substrate will bind and undergo reaction substrate binding you can see in the active site includes both substrate binding site and catalytic site what is the meaning of substrate binding site to initiate an enzyme reaction the substrate has to bind with the enzyme and as a site where substrate binds this site is called a substrate binding site responsible for substrate specificity so only specific substrate which is specific for the enzyme is going to bind to the binding site of the enzyme and catalytic site after binding with the substrate the enzyme is in enzyme substrate complex form now the substrate is converted to product a site called uh, catalytic site of enzymes brings about the transformation the catalytic site is responsible for reaction specificity so in the last you can see active site is having two important sites one is called as substrate binding site and another one is called as catalytic site substrate binding site for the attachment of the substrate catalytic site to perform the reaction so this is about active site of enzymes so again you can see in this sub illustration enzyme is in blue color and a particular area of the enzyme where substrate bind is called as active site it containing two areas one is called as binding site and another one is called as catalytic site next we are going to discuss about cofactors or which are also called as coenzymes and activators enzymes are protein in nature as we have discussed in the beginning some enzymes require certain non-protein factors in addition to their protein part for their full activity this non-protein part is called as the cofactor so enzymes are proteins in nature and proteins are organic okay <coughs> and uh, along with this protein part some enzymes require non-protein factors in addition to their protein part for their full activity this non-protein part is called as cofactor co means cooperative cooperative means helping helping factors cooperative in that first two letter is taken co and factors means certain substances which are involved in this reaction so enzymes contain a protein part plus a non-protein part then you will get an active enzyme so enzyme even though it is a protein part by itself it will be not able to perform the reaction it requires some non-protein part you can see in the illustration the second one they can they require a certain non-protein part it is called as cofactor so below the non-protein part you can see the in the bracket cofactor the protein part is called as apoenzyme below the protein part you can see it is written as apoenzyme and non-protein part below that you can see it is called as cofactors both combined then only will have a active enzyme which can perform the reaction which is called as holoenzyme below the active enzyme you can see holoenzyme so then what is this non-protein part which is also called as cofactor what is its meaning cofactors can be either they are non-protein part but they may be either organic in nature made up of carbon compounds or they are inorganic compounds which doesn't have carbon compounds okay if the cofactor is an organic compound it is called as coenzyme if the cofactor is in organic in nature so organic cofactor 
aromark organic aromark coenzyme if the cofactor is in organic form it is called as coenzyme if the cofactor is in inorganic form then it is called as activator so if you have written cofactor aromark inorganic compound then aromark is activator so it depends on type of the compound if the organic compound is the cofactor then it is coenzyme if the inorganic compound is the cofactor then it is called as activator so that means cofactor is of two types one is coenzyme in bracket organic form and second one is activator in the bracket inorganic form of substance is present in coenzyme you can see examples nad fad tpp etc what is this nad nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide FAD means flavin adenine dinucleotide, TPP means thiamine pyrophosphate. They are all vitamin derived compounds. They are obtained from vitamins. That's why we have to take vitamins. Why we have to take vitamins? To produce these coenzymes. What is the need of these coenzymes? They are required for enzyme activity. Next one is the activators. Example iron, copper, magnesium, etc. These are inorganic metal ions. So, why we have to take different types of minerals? Carbon copper magnesium iron cobalt nickel selenium sodium potassium etc because they act as activators so certain of these metal ions acts as cofactors in the iron copper magnesium is very important they are inorganic compounds which acts as activators so this is about uh, cofactors now We are going to discuss about uh, proenzymes. Proenzymes are also called as zymogens. So, pro what are proenzymes or zymogens means? For example, if you are having a pen with a cap, you don't remove the cap, and if you want to write, then you, you cannot able to write. So that means the pen is in inactive form. If you want to write, you have to remove the cap, and then you have to start writing. So if you remove the cap, then only the pen will get activated for writing. So similarly, proenzymes or zymogens means they are inactive form of enzymes. When they are in inactive form, they are they will not perform catalytic reaction. They will get activated and then they will start their enzymatic process. Some enzymes are synthesized and secreted in inactive forms. Secreted as inactive form that is proenzymes or zymogens these precursor forms are converted to active form by zymases enzymes in the site of their activity this activation involves breaking of one or more specific covalent peptide bonds such modification is irreversible so enzymes which are uh, synthesized you can see the first line some enzymes are synthesized and secreted as inactive form they are inactive because in that time at that time it is not required so that's why it is inactive so when it is required it will get activated form who is going to make this inactive to active it is converted to active form you can see in the second line by zymases in the site of activity so examples you can see uh, that uh, conversion is by breakdown of certain peptide bonds so in the some proteases of gastrointestinal tract such as trypsin obtained from trypsinogen trypsinogen is uh, uh, inactive form and trypsin is active form chymotrypsinogen is inactive form chymotrypsin is active form pepsinogen is inactive form proenzyme and pepsin is active form so like this there are so many enzymes which are is in zymogens or proenzymes or which you call inactive form of enzymes that will get activated so this is about the beginning session of enzymes will continue in the next session thank you